is off to the Ukraine today, hoping he's done enough to keep Conservative MPs from sending those letters to Sir Graham Brady. He's in listening mode. But will it be enough to save him? I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by Conservative MP for Bassett Law, Brendan Clark Smith. Brendan, welcome back to the show. So, 12 parties being looked into by the police. Uh, three or four were attended by the Prime Minister. One was in his own flat. 300 pictures handed over. And we've only had the edited version of the Sue Gray report. What's a day in the life of a Conservative MP like today? Well, I think we're relieved that a report actually came out. We've been waiting a long time for it. I think people are fed up of it dragging on more than anything. And of course, that report has been severely limited because of the police investigation that's going on as well. Um, but the Prime Minister has said what is in the report. He's accepting the recommendations there. And he's also going to act on what Sue Gray has said. He's doubled down on the apology for it. He's taken responsibility for it as well. And then, of course, he spoke with the parliamentary party later on. Uh, it was very conciliatory, as, as, as Darren said. And uh, I think that actually smoothed things over very well. And I think it's kind of that added impetus to get things done. So we may not have had that full report was pretty damning, even in its watered-down form. It was scathing about failures of leadership and judgment in Number 10 and the Cabinet Office. Why are you sticking by him? Well, I think there's certainly a cultural issue, and I know people have mentioned that this has gone on in Downing Street for, for many years under previous premierships Come on, as well. Come Theresa May, can you imagine her getting the, getting the booze out? <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it's so much the Prime Minister's as the, the culture of the workplace itself there. And, of course, uh, you are ultimately responsible um, as the person in charge as the Prime Minister, and that's why I'm glad he wants to do something about it. Of course, with COVID and the restrictions, there's the, there's the added issue there and the, the moral issue that people are, are putting across and whether any rules are broken. So I certainly accept what the Prime Minister said on that. I'm pleased he's actually said he's going to do something about it. Of course, until the full report comes out, it's very difficult to do that. But I also welcome welcome the fact that he said when that report does come out, it will be published in full. Now, the police are looking into various gatherings, including a gathering in the Downing Street flat on the evening of November the 30th, 2020, to mark Dominic Cummings' sacking as the Prime Minister's chief adviser. Questioned in the House of Commons on December the 8th about whether he would confirm that the November the 13th event happened, the Prime Minister said no. But I'm sure that whatever happened, the guidance was followed and the rules were followed at all times. Would he have to step down if he misled Parliament? Well, I don't think the Prime Minister's misled Parliament. I think what he's done is he's uh, given information to people in good faith in the House uh, based on the information that the Prime Minister actually has. Of course, if he's been given the wrong or incorrect information, then I'm sure he's happy to correct that and I'm sure he's happy to uh, put that side of the story across. But again, we're not really going to know that, Gloria, until that full report is published. So the Prime Minister addressed Tory MPs, as Darren referred to, as you referred to, to last night. He said he was in full listening mode. But what struck me is that on Sunday, Rishi Sunak and the Prime Minister wrote an article saying that they were going to confirm that they were going to put up taxes in April. Now, I, I don't reckon most Tory MPs want that to happen. Does that really signal listening mode, that they're full steam ahead with that policy? It's very difficult because national insurance rise, of course, our manifesto said we weren't going to do that. That was before COVID came along. Something I found very, very difficult to vote for and something I would obviously welcome if we could find a way around it and didn't have to do that. But at the same time, that's there to pay for the NHS backlog and for social care. And if we're going to actually... Uh, keep that national insurance cut in place, then we're going to have to show where that money actually comes from. And I think it'll be a far worse situation um, going into the next couple of years and people still can't see a doctor. So if there's a solution, then that's great, but the money's got to come from somewhere, unfortunately. Would you say the Prime Minister was absolutely out of the woods or are you guys putting him on probation for a little while longer? Well, I, th I think it's difficult while an investigation's going on. I mean, I certainly have 100% faith in the Prime Minister. I think he's done a very good job, whether it's with the economy, whether it's with vaccines and, of course, second anniversary of getting Brexit done. And it's, it's something that we're very proud of. Um, I wouldn't want to see us throw the, the baby out with the bathwater in that sense. The PM's just flown off to Kiev as we've seen um, some very important work to be doing. So I think the benefit of the doubt, um, we've seen the Sue Gray report or the, the red acted um, or the at least basic version of it. And I think that gives us something to go on. I think now we can concentrate on other things and we can come back to this when it's actually completed. You say benefit of the doubt. Do you think the public have given the Prime Minister the benefit of the doubt on these gatherings? 
I think the public are very frustrated and I think if you look over the last few weeks I think the mood has significantly changed to the point where they want to actually move on now. That doesn't mean forgetting if something has gone wrong there um, and if something has gone wrong and someone needs to be punished further down the line or action needs to be taken then I think that's fair enough. But what I found generally on the doorsteps, Gloria, is people want to talk about the cost of living, they want to talk about the, the energy prices, they mm. want to talk about Russia having 100,000 troops on the border with Ukraine. So whilst I wouldn't say it's completely completely a Westminster bubble issue. I think certainly what we're talking out, well, about this week, it's mainly about MPs and what's going on in the Commons. So Andrew Mitchell, former Cabinet Minister, said this morning that the Prime Minister's refusal to take responsibility is like battery acid corroding the Conservative Party. You, you just don't get why anybody would say that. Well, I respect colleagues' views. Um, I know it's not for everybody, and, and there's a diversity of views within the party, as, as we've seen. Um, many people have, have changed their views over the last couple of weeks. Um, even yesterday, we had some fairly prominent people coming out saying that actually they accept what the Prime Minister said and uh, is promised to actually put some changes in there. So, again, whilst, whilst I respect what Andrew said, you know, I respectfully disagree with that, and I think we've still got a lot of good things to come from this Prime Minister. Oh, well, let's look at what the former Prime Minister, Theresa May, said yesterday. What the Greer report does show is that Number 10 Downing Street was not observing the regulations they had imposed on the public. So either my right honourable friend had not read the rules or didn't understand what they meant and others around him, or they didn't think the rules applied to Number 10. She said, which was it, when she addressed uh, the Prime Minister through the Speaker? Which one do you think it was? Well, I think the Prime Minister understands the rules and I think uh, most other people in the country understand the rules as well. Uh, you you and I, you know, we've, we've abided by them, we've uh, yes. done our best to. And, of course, the Prime Minister has gone to the House and he said that he fully believes that he has complied with those rules. So, again, if, if people haven't, then and there's a case to answer potentially. But I think in the meantime, I think you do have to give people the benefit of the doubt until at least there's evidence there to the contrary. Would you give him the benefit of the doubt on what he said to Keir Starmer yesterday, because the former chief whip of the Conservative Party, Julian Smith, has said this. The smear made against Keir Starmer relating to Jimmy Savile yesterday is wrong and cannot be defended. It should be withdrawn. Should it? I mean, for right or wrong reasons, occasionally I'll get that raised on, on the doorstep. Um, but what I would actually say with that, it, it is part of the punch and judy part of politics. Some people like it, some don't. But I think the wider point here has kind of been missed, really. And that's when you're the, when you're the head of an organisation, um, even if you're not directly involved with something yourself, if something happens with your organisation, you take ultimate responsibility for it. That's what the Prime Minister's got at the moment with the Sue Gray inquiry, things that don't necessarily involve the Prime Minister directly. Directly, but he's taking responsibility for number 10, for Whitehall, for the Cabinet Office and what is going on there. So through that lens, I understand the point that was, was being made. Um, I know some people don't think the statement was the place to actually do that, but I can understand where he's coming from. Brendan Clark-Smith, always willing to take one for the team. We and always a pleasure, Gloria. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan Clark-Smith.